All right, I'm here with Coach Ron Rivera, and we're going to take a quick look at some highlights, some things that came out really well against the Dallas Cowboys. And I thought the defense played great in this game, Coach, but specifically one guy in particular, and that's Jonathan Allen. I mean, he did an excellent job, and everyone looks at his production and says, wow, what an outstanding individual effort. But people also need to understand that the rest of the defense is also supporting him. Payne, in particular, did an excellent job in this game. Didn't have maybe as many tackles for loss or whatever, but did a great job. And I just want to point this out. Okay, they do a little change of strength motion here mm -hmm. with the tight end. They move him across the ball. They get John into a shade, which is maybe not his ideal position. You want John making plays from the three technique. So shade is right here, outside shoulder of the center. Um, and I just love how John is off the ball here, using his hands very well. But, you know, gap releases here, coach. Yeah. And I don't know if you want that to happen, but gap releases. And I think Payne does an excellent job here of getting penetration vertically into the defense, which forces the back to cut back into an unblocked uh, Allen here. Yes. Well, the big thing about any time you play backside, backdoor, you've got to be able to make the play. But as you said, the key to this, though, is the fact that Duran gets vertical and splits the double team, holds the point of attack for the most part, forces the cutback, and then he almost makes the play coming back inside. So again, this is great teamwork, guys working in tandem, working well together. Yeah, and I love how hard everyone's playing, too. Yes. You know, it could be easy. You know, things aren't going great, coach. They're all playing really, really hard football and love to see that. This, coach, this is maybe my favorite play, defensive play from the game, just because I love the way this well, is disguised here, coach. It's great. Yeah, and the disguise is a big part of it. First and foremost, one of the things that's, that happens that we really like to talk about is that we're in a mug front, yep. okay? We get everybody up. One of the things that we have shown early in this season has the, been the ability okay to run a zero blitz or to run man pressure and so, zero blitz is everybody's coming right correct man across correct. the back end yep. correct and then you're involving this, the post safety he's no longer involved in the post but what we've done is we've given that look to everybody right now mm -hmm. and then with the motion everybody thinks again we are playing man and we i love because benjamin say juice puts a little puts a little seasoning on it coach disguises it a little bit because i tell you if i was playing tonight like oh this is man coverage we've got some type of pressure coming and it's just those little details that kind of elevate this play. Yes. And again, you said, and watch the linebackers drop out. Everyone's dropping to their spots. Yep. Great job. You end up in like a nice cover two structure here with the safeties on the back end. They've got half. Oh, this is the this is the Tampa player, excuse me, but he's got half down here. It's a great job in terms of disguising the coverage, getting guys into good spots, and then you force the quarterback to hold the football. Exactly. And what, what it also did for us was it created some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Oh, yes. Again. Jonathan Allen gets a one on one. Montez Sweat gets a one on one. Yeah, okay? let's talk about that from the back end. Yeah. Deron Payne gets a one on one. Okay. Yep. Casey Tuhill gets a one on. Excuse me. Deron is actually the only guy that gets a double. Gets a double. Okay, because mm -hmm. the center comes over to help. But because Deron got some penetration and stepped into it, it doesn't allow Cooper Rush the opportunity to step freely into right. the pocket. Right. He can't step up here because Deron is pressing in. Right. Yep. Which is what you want from a good rush. Right. It exactly. lets these lets these rushes around the edge get around the outside, and get their sacks, right? Yep. And, again, the guy that really ends up making the play is, jo is Jonathan, again, because he's singled up. Yep. Okay, he gets to the edge of the guard very quickly and just beats him. And I love the hand play there, Coach. Yes. Like, that's something he's, he's a power player for a couple years, mm -hmm. but that dexterity with the hands has really changed this game. That's one of the things that Jeff Scanini, our defensive line coach, has really done a nice job working with our guys. You know, between he and Ryan, I think they've done a nice job in terms of developing a lot of options for our rushers. Yeah, and I think that, again, good pass rushers have a lot of options. Great point there, Coach. And then this is, okay, this is play 61 out of 63. Mm -hmm. I think it's very possible that everyone can kind of be mailed in the bag here. Dallas is in a four-minute offense. And I just want to point out how hard these guys are playing. Everyone's playing hard, but they end up making the play. And what does that mean to you, Coach, having guys competing this late in the game? Well, I mean, as long as they feel there's an opportunity to win, they're going to go out and they're going to play football yeah. the way they're supposed to. You know, and that's one of the things you like. And it's interesting because as you look at this play, this is a play that, you know, this is a power play. They're trying yeah. to come downhill. But you look at the – and you pointed it out. You watch Jonathan make this yeah. play. You watch Duran make this play. And then you watch um, a young man who we, uh, who we, yes. who we plucked, yes. John Ridgeway, hold the point while yeah. he's trying to be doubled and scooped. And uh, to me, again, like people don't see this, but what I see here with that is that these linebackers, they're flowing free to the football yes. because this young man right here is taking on multiple blockers. Yes, and, is. again, that's never going to show up in a stat yep. sheet, but getting everybody playing hard football – run to the football trying to get on this i think speaks to kind of a culture you've built defensively well we're getting there we're getting there i mean there's some things that you know we got to do and one of the things we got to do is we got to stop giving up the explosives yeah absolutely and i think now we get to go talk about tennessee and see what how you stop the explosives for that group coach really excited to take a look at some tennessee film here this first clip is of a play action pass 
And I think this team does an excellent job with the play-action pass game. And I just wanted to talk about how this puts you guys in conflict and why it can be so challenging to deal with. Well, the biggest thing, first and foremost, is you, you can't allow them to run the ball successfully early. Yeah. Because if they do, then play-action becomes even more deadly. And that's the thing you've got to be really aware of. And again, just look real quick at the route combination. More so than anything, this is a two-man route with a check out. Okay, so the back's going to check his way out as the safety valve. For the most part, what you really have is a two-man route off of, against cover three for the most part. And what, what's going to happen on this is once the wide receiver drops his head like he's going vertical, mm. that corner is going to start to take off. And as soon as he off does, top you're about yep, here, right? yep. as soon as he does, he just shuts it down and breaks mm. it to the out. Ball's delivered on time. Big catch, first down. Yeah, and I think the other thing about this is the protection. And that, to me, is maybe more impactful, right? Because yep. it lets the quarterback get hitches in his drop, right. right? It lets the offensive line kind of have a nice, easy pass protection down. It lets the quarterback see those concepts open up. Right, and one of the things that they do as far as this is concerned is they're running this off of their belly weak action, okay? Mm -hmm. So yep. weak side run. Everybody's going to step to the weak side. And the things these guys do is they don't do what we people just call elephants on parade. <laughs> they're keeping their shoulders square. Yeah, so elephants on parade, everyone turns to the right and just yes. goes to the sideline. Here Correct. it's like a downhill. You right. feel this action. Right, and they keep those shoulders square. And because they keep those shoulders square, this looks just like the belly action, yep. mm -hmm. okay? Like they're running um, open side zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because of that, the D line has to honor that before they get into their pass rush. You've got to make a quick decision as a defense alignment as to whether I'm getting into pass rush mode mm -hmm. or I'm going to defend the run, and then, uh-oh, before they know it, it's pass. Yeah, I think that's the thing. You see all those guys, they're in the run, and then all of a sudden you see their heads get all up tall looking for the ball. They have no idea, and it keeps the rush very quiet and tepid, does. which is one of the advantages because that's not a great pass-protecting offensive line. No, it's not, but, again, the run action is yeah. what sells it, and this is exactly what they did. And so as a former tight end, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Coach, is that the guy that has the hardest block here, in my opinion, is the backside tight end who's always one-on-one -on -one here. Yep. How important is it for that player, the end, Montez Sweat, James with Williams, Casey Tuhill, to take advantage of that matchup against the tight end? Well, the biggest thing they have to do in, in that situation is they've got to get they've got to get to the edge and get vertical. Right. Mm -hmm. And then right here, what they're in, because of their odd front that they're in, um, they have a, I don't know if you would call it a 6-I or would you yeah. call it a 5? Five? 5, yeah, 49 right there, 94 right there. But what me. happens is he's given the tight end an angle to come down and squeeze him. Right. And for the most part, I don't think we'll have – a defensive end in that position. And it's also important to put your guys in good positions to be successful, yeah. right, against this type of look here. Exactly. And, and because that happens, what happens, they get pinned and yeah. there's no edge rush. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And so, you, like you said, Coach, one of the things that makes that go is the fact that Tennessee's an excellent team running the football. Absolutely. Specifically outside zone. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a, this next clip here. And it's just, to me, this shows you the margin for error or the lack of margin for error when you're playing a team like Tennessee on the outside run, outside zone game. Yep. Now here, here, here's a, a nice version of the outside zone as far as they're concerned. They're in 12 personnel, two tight end set, yep. and they're running to the strong side. What that allows, is it, it allows a nice double on the edge, yep. right, to push the guy out, create a little bit more space, and what happens is now the offensive line starts to stretch, and when it stretches, what's going to happen is these creases are going to get bigger, and the running back, Working downhill is going to make one cut, and he's off to the race. And I'm glad you said that, Coach, because everyone thinks outside zone of being, like, outside, but it's really a way to get the back to hit downhill against soft creases, right? Correct. And, and, and again, what, what's happening right now is Oakland, Oakland, oh, my goodness. Yeah, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I do the same thing all the time, Coach. Yeah. Is not setting an edge. What you would love to do is you'd love to see 55 not get widened, but really just knock that first tight end back and set – the edge of the defense right there. You'd like to see 91 not get widened and split that double and hold the point right about there. Yeah. And if he's holding that point right there, those creases aren't as big. But because he continues to widen, look how much space there is. Yeah. And I also look at like number 97 here. And 97, who's the nose guard, if you rewind it, coach, he's the one, in my opinion, that falls down here. Yeah. Because as this stretches, right, he has to stretch too. And the center does a little savvy little center trick there, a little hockey, pull the shoulder pads down, get him on the ground. And that's all it takes yep. when you got a guy as big as Derrick Henry. Because, I, you know, 90's a good football player, good play here, but he's not going to make an arm tackle there. Yeah, you're not going to make an arm tackle against Derrick Henry. The, th the key about this is, and people say, is get your head across the bow. In other words, as you go to make this tackle, you've got to have your leverage side across his body. Right. And because he doesn't, 
that arm tackle gets broken. Yeah, and the other thing is their, their receivers do an excellent job blocking downfield yes. too. That's one thing their receivers do. They will block downfield. They're not super dynamic, but again, coach, like physical running back, got to make a play there. Um, but coach, always fun to see the film through your eyes. I really appreciate your time. Thank All righty, gotcha.